là pas dans les deux heures you'll find if you shop around Google you'll find that some uh, brothers uh, had actually made an attempt to explain and I'm not here to criticize any but I'm just saying we will be inshallah with our explanation uh, targeting that is to understand and the one who is at high level is not going to find it boring to say that this is a replica and also the petition this is the first thing and the third the second thing inshallah and that is we will as well link this hadith to which are contemporary like Sheikh al-Albani rahimahullah, like Sheikh ibn Ruthaymi, like Sheikh ibn Baz, like Sheikh Abdul Razak, Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad, all these shiukh, inshallah, we will link in their interpretation and also we'll talk about those hadith which are on the questions. Number one of a hadith, which is hadith, is not authentic, regarding the virtue of memorizing 40 hadiths. This hadith comes from nine companions. The scholars of hadith have got an agreement amongst them. He said it tough them. And it's something on the speaker. See, the problem. And I witness also the other narrations. All of those hadith is not to be authentic. Why an Imam and Nawawi as chosen the word Second reason he said. Because so many scholars, countless scholars, a lot, have made number of books. They have made number of books. By the way, is there any speaker for the sisters that are there? There's a speaker inside, yes? Okay. What you need to do is just listen to me. Put the speaker a bit loud and face it towards the wall. Because uh, name or the major books titled 40 from the Abdullah ibn Mubarak. The owner or the author of Kitab al Sharif, had Abu Naim, Abu Uthman Sabuni, the great Abu Uthmaniya. He died in the year four hundred in the year four hundred seventy-six. So we have forty, not just the Hadith regarding Adab, regarding Jihad. Regarding uh, the personality of the Muslim, or Sheikh Al Halim, he made a book called Al Arba'un Shaksiya, Al Muslim, 40 hadith regarding the, the characteristics or the charisma of a Muslim, the characteristics of a Muslim. Al Arba'un Hadith of Shaksiya Muslim. I have actually done that book with some of the brothers a bit of time ago. Now, this is the second reason. The third reason, also why I mean, now we call it the 40, he had depended upon the hadith of the Prophet which is authentic. Allah, let the person who is witnessing me saying things to the one who is absent. Also Allah's message, he says, نَنْظَرَ اللَّهُمْ رَأَنْ سَمِعَ مَقَالَةِ فَوَعَاهَا فَأَدَّاهَا كَمَا سَمِعَا May Allah give the barakah and the glorification for a person who had heard the hadith from me, understood it, and then he conveyed it exactly as he had heard it. So because of those three, but to tell you the truth, we'll start with the students with 40, 40, 40, 40 people, they think that there is something holy about the 40. To such an extent that all these people who are claiming that through their meditation in the cave or whatever they were, 
for 40, something happened to them. So they stayed 40 days in a cave on their own, something like a relation came to them. All of it, of course, bluffing is not correct. But I'm just saying, uh, I mean, the student had to understand there is nothing attached in holiness regarding the number 40. Okay? Uh, but the Imam, no, he did not make 40. Actually, if you count them, it's 42. Without 42. But he had called it the 40 because 42, the fraction is not that much. So 42 is, is 40. No problem. And now, we call it Al Nawawiyah because it's Imam Al Nawawi who had collected it. He didn't call it Arba'in, no. he called it the Arba'in, Arba'in Ahadith, the 40. These 40, Limam al he says, they are the principles, the foundations around which Islam takes. So it's not any 40 Hadiths, they are principles, they are foundations. They are from those Ahadith which the Imam al-Bukhari said, been selected from mainly al Bukhari Muslim. That's why he says it is he says it is authentic. But actually uh, we say that uh, some of the scholars have made number of hadith not authentic. Our Sheikh al Abani he says two hadith from these 40 are not authentic but they are sound and mean. I'll explain that what it means what happens to be authentic and sound and mean. Sound and mean. Hadith number 30, and that is Shaykh Al-Bani said, not authentic, in Allah Fawwa Fawwa'i. And Hadith 41, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هواه في معه ما جئتم به. And these two hadiths are Shaykh Al-Bani said, not authentic, but the meaning of it is sound. As other had made other hadith not authentic, Hadith number 12, من حسن الإسلام المرأة تركه ما داني. One of the scholars like Sheikh Imam Sheikh Abu Sahakat Ayn, Abdullah, he makes it not authentic. Also, the hadith La Bara or La Bara, which is well known, Hadith everybody memorizes, is not authentic according to some of the scholars. But as I said myself, I'm going to follow the Sheikh Al Albani and I'll tell you why later on. I'll follow the Sheikh Al Albani, Rahimah. Now, it is incumbent upon the student of knowledge to concern himself with this book. Because we said it comprises and contains number of usul, number of foundations in aqidah, in ahkam, and in adab. Now, that's the question. How can it be and, and not authentic and yet sound and mean? And why should we just delete and, you know, uh, take away, remove these ahadith, which is not authentic, from that? 40. For the following reason. Reason number one, because the uh, authentication of it and not authentication or disauthentication of it is not of consensus. So, as I said, for example, the hadith of Min Husni Islam in Taqu Malani, hadith number 12, that from the good example of a believer to leave what is not of his concern, not really. Is something that is we have consensus from the scholars of hadith that it is not authentic. Because of this, we cannot delete that because some makes it authentic, some makes it not authentic. Also, if this hadith has been established in meaning wise from other hadith from the book and the sunnah, then we implement it, but we do not attribute it to the Prophet. But we say it is said, Pila, Ruya. So, if this hadith, the meaning of it, like for example, لا ضرر ولا ضرر أبو سعيد When you say that this hadith is not authentic, that means can compensate for this hadith, similar to it. So, the, here we find that not something harmful in itself or harming others is a principle. Most of the fiqh uh, issues depends upon this hadith. Now, I'm saying that it is not belonging to the Prophet, the meaning is sound. Hadith not authentic, except what my shaykh, not authentic. I, this is not being 
a blind follower or mutaassib? No, not correct. Because the Sheikh is the Imam of the Hadith. Obviously, you are without any doubt. Nobody can challenge that. And I have looked into the uh, discussion presented by other scholars regarding the Hadith that they read not authentic, like Imam al Sheikh Sheikh Musaq Abwaini, and it was agreed to be satisfactory to follow his opinion. Well, I still goods and knowledge regarding this field of knowledge is not really that much. But I could distinguish whether this is strong argument or not. We may know he says in his Muqaddima introduction for this book, he said, وَقَدْ اتَّفَقَ الْعُلَمَاءُ عَلَى جَوَازِ الْعَمَلِ بِالْحَدِيثِ فِي فَضَائِلِ الْأَعْمَالِ And the scholars had agreed on the permissibility of acting upon the un- authentic, which is not authentic, the unauthentic hadith, there are two groups. One said, we are not going to be implementing any unauthentic, unauthentic means what? Not authentic. Unauthentic hadith in the virtues of the deeds. And the other half, the other party of the scholars, division, they said, we will allow it but conditions now these conditions is very hard for us to implement it these conditions are as follows Imam Ibn Hajar he made them even up to 10 conditions in his booklet the Ibn Ajar um, conditions as follows they said that this hadith should not be very weak it should not be very weak the, the weakness of it is like a, 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 a person who is in the narrator, or in his, the uh, narrators, who is, for example, memory wise, is not sound, but not a liar. So this hadith came from three, four narrations. In the narrators, there's a liar. And another hadith, is a, in the narrators, different liar. And a third hadith. And then in the narration, a third liar. So you've got first liar, different from the second liar, then liar. You know, if you add these hadiths, the three together, they're still not authentic. Because liar plus a liar doesn't make it truthful. You understand me? So it's a liar here, a liar here. Even it's word for word. Because it could be... So a liar with a liar, it makes two liars. It doesn't make truthful. So if, number one, the hadith is not huh, severe, sort of very weak. Secondly, that this hadith has to be under a foundation or a principle. It cannot be a principle by itself. So you cannot establish the Salah, but it could talk about the virtues of the Salah. So it is in the virtues of the acts, not establishing the act. And not establishing the virtues. No, the virtues are there, but this is to add. The third thing that we should not attribute this hadith to the Prophet, because it is weak. So we should say, Qila, Ruya, it been said, it was narrated. We call it in Arabic, we say what it like you give it a word that makes it really straight away for the scholars to know that it is not authentic. Number four, our Sheikh al Bani adds that we have to clarify to the people how many people they know when we say, Qila, it was said that this is unauthentic. How many people they know this? Very few. So, uh, let me just put this person up there. Yeah. So, the, uh, basically, the scholars have to clarify to those people who are saying it, who's the people that are conveying it to them, that it's not, not authentic. And of course, there are other scholars who have put more conditions, like Imam Salam, and the Qawri al-Badir of Ibn Hajar rahimahullah also he had said in Tabi al-Ajar they made it about 10 conditions but these are the ones which are the main ones so when you say the hadith you should not really have a creed or the, the belief that the Prophet of Allah had said and because of these conditions as we said it's very hard to implement so the correct saying is the one who said forget about the unauthentic Forget about the one which is not authentic. 
We have enough authentic hadith to establish with whatever we want. So, the last issue regarding this is that there is a saying of Imam Rahimahullah, I want to discuss it, which says, إِذَا وَوِينَ فِي الْأَحْكَامِ تَشَدَّدْ وَإِذَا وَوِينَ فِي الْفَضَائِلْ تَسَهَمْ If we have been given narrations regarding ahkam, salah, ahkam, siyam, ahkam, zakah, then we will be very strict. And we'll be given narrations regarding the virtues of an act, Allah al we will go easy. We will not be strict. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, to explain this statement of Imam Ahmad, he said that the unauthentic, the one which is not authentic, hadith, in the eyes and in the scale and the investigation of Imam Ahmad, it is not the same which is hadith, not authentic in the eyes of those who came later on. It's actually, he's talking about al-hadith al-hasan. Al-hadith al-hasan, which is sahih authentic, but is not as authentic as the sahih authentic. Um, so he's saying basically that Imam Ahmad, when it comes to the establishing the foundation of Salah of Zakat, we have to make sure that the hadith is 100% authentic. But if it is not establishing the facts, then, or the, the presence of the deen, then you can have a hadith that's not, not authentic. It is authentic, but it doesn't have to be the sahih. It could go down to the hasan. Okay? Now, we have scholars. They don't even accept, not only the hadith which is not authentic, but also the hadith al-hasan. He doesn't accept it at all which is from the grades of the Sahih. So some of them may say, we will implement the Hadith Hassan li what is li What does that mean? If the Hadith Hassan, which is not the Sahih, but it is Hassan li that means the narrators had produced this. Because of itself, it is Hassan. We accept it. But if it's Hassan because other Hadith came to support it, we don't accept it. Okay? So this refutes the argumentation, the statement of Imam when he said that the scholars had agreed to implement the, or to accept the uh, hadith which is not authentic regarding the virtues of the deeds. Making them to be confused whether this is hadith of the Prophet of Allah. Abu Abu one of the great scholars as well, he was so strict regarding those who one of the great scholars as well, he was so strict regarding those who the da'if as the da'if as a proof for them in the virtues of the acts. If it that it is permissible to implement the unauthentic, the hadith in the virtues that explore here, and Imam al Nawi rahimahullah, is regarded by the scholars, is to be mutasahir. He is easy going in narrating ijma, consensus. He's, there's a consensus regarding this, and we found out it is not consensus. So that's the first reason. Even Imam al Nawi himself can convey to us there's a consensus regarding something, a matter in the Sharia. And at the same time, we find that this issue is well known to the scholars to be an issue of difference. Well known, well known. Okay, I'm going to give you an example, inshallah. So an issue which is well known as different among the scholars, yet an Imam Nawi rahimahullah said, there is consensus. That's why I'm just saying to you, when he said the statement, there is a consensus among the scholars to accept the hadith which is not authentic in the virtues of the peace. That's not correct statement. Because he is what they said. He, is, and he, he says it without, you know, uh, make, making a more research into this. Imam al rahimahullah. Actually, we find that Imam al rahimahullah, he had narrated consensus uh, uh, on something which he himself later on uh, conveys to us there's a difference. So he forgets. So he, can, he, he conveys to us something consensus. And then in the same book, later on, he will say, um, there is khilaf of this issue. I'll give an example, inshallah. And um, when I talk about khilaf, yeah, difference, I'm not talking about 
the khilaf which is not considered to be khilaf so they are difference we don't count it as a, um, a difference which is should be uh, considered no it's not considered I'm talking about a proper difference a proper difference for example from these matters that is uh, narrated by Imam now to be have consensus yet we find it's a well known uh, issue that scholars have differed about uh, in his book, Al Majmu' Fi Shahi Muhammad, Al Majmu' is about 24, 22 build volumes, some number of the prints, about 25 volumes. It's a book which he did not continue, he did, sorry, he did not finish because he had a short life. 44 to 45 years old he was when he died. And he's a wizard, uh, He had claimed that there is Ijma, Al Imam al and I'm quoting here from Sheikh Al Albani, uh, I'm quoting from the Sheikh Al Albani. Uh, uh, in there, in the footnotes, Sheikh Al-Albani says that Al-Imam Nawi, okay, he says that there is a consensus that the Salat al-Jinaz, the prayer of the Jinnah, the funeral, is not disliked during the times which are prohibited. You know the times which are prohibited, like for example, after Fajr until the sun had risen, a spear length, 15 minutes after sunrise. When the sun is rising, until it's 15. So two, take two times here. After, after you pray the Bajr, until the sun rises. And also, when the sun is rising, until it's about two meters above the horizon, 15 minutes after the sunrise. Thirdly, the zenith, which is the time before the 15 minutes before the time. Fourthly, the time when the sun is setting. Okay, the sun is setting. And that is. So he says, no, 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 it is each now. Consensus that Salat al Jinnah, the prayer of the funeral, okay, it is not to be disliked. You can pray at any time, even during the times of those times which are disliked. As for the difference regarding the issue, it's an old difference, well before, okay, well before the Which class, which number of the classes now at the moment? Class number. Sorry? 67. 67. 67. 67 classes. And we are still having reached. We've got reached 300. So, Riyadh al Salihin has 36 hadiths from the Alba'in, the 40 of the Nawi. Both books are being made, by the way, by whom? By the Nawi. So we could really, I'm saying this, is an information for you to help you. You could take the interpretation and the explanation of some of the hadith from the other side. Because there are 36 hadith in uh, the book of the other side, from the 40 of the Nawi. What are the hadith which are this? How many hadith left now? So we have 36 from the Arba'in is in the Yah side. Come on, mathematicians. Six. six. Well, we left with six. Because six plus thirty-six is the forty-two, and the other one is forty-two. But the forty is not forty; it's forty-two. The fraction has been taken away by the Imam. Now we assume just to make it like. So we have six. I'm going to give you these six hadiths in number. Hadith the four in the forty. So in our number fourteen. Okay, this one is not in the Salih, which is Dayahil Dayahil Bil Muslim Bil Dalilah. Number two, hadith number 22. Hadith number 22 in the Arba'in. Hadith number three, hadith 32. La Hadith number four is the 33. Al Hadith number five, hadith 31. إن الله تجاوز لي عن أمتي الخطأ والنسيان. حديث number six, the last one is number forty one in the forty nowies. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هوا ترى عني ما جئتم. طيب. These are the hadith that has been in the Imam forties, which is not in the the other side. طيب. This book has so many explanations. So many scholars have, uh, to, to have made an attempt to explain it. 
We start with the first one, Ibn Dakiq al Eid. Then after that, Ibn Rajab al Hanbali. And the best, and we can say the best, the, the, the biggest one out of them is Ibn Rajab al Hanbali, who had added to his 40 another eight to make it 50. So he said, Jawami al Kalim. He said, uh, This book, Fi uh, Ahadith al Hikam. That is, this book is Fi Khamsina Hadith al Hadith al Hadith. That is, he said, Jawami al Kalim from the words of the Prophet Muhammad Jawami. Regarding his tradition of 50, he explained, he made 50, and he made them as well to explain. Also, at Munawi, Rahimahullah. Also, at Ansari, Rahimahullah. Also, from the Israel of the Old Man, Ibn al Very good explanation of Al Arba'in Nawiyah. And also, Abdul Mahsin Abad, Hafibahullah, he's still alive. And the biggest of all of them is said, Ibn Rajab al Hamdan. Ibn Rajab, he says in his book, أملى الحافظ أبو أبو عمر أملى الحافظ أبو عمر بن صلاح مجلس سماه الأحاديث كلية. He said the حافظ أبو عمر بن صلاح the one known scholar he had given a class which he had called it الأحاديث الكلية. The hadiths which are the principles and جمع فيه جوامع التي يقال أن مدار حديثي عليها ما كان في معناه كلمة جامع وجزا مثل كذا وكذا. He gathered 26 hadiths. Those hadith are the principles. Based upon the hadith of Allah, أُعْطِيْتُ جَوَابٍ عَنْ كَلِمْ أَوْ فَوَاتِحَ كَلِمْ وَخَوَاتِمَ I have been given collective words. What does that mean collective words? Words of you remember that they need books as well. Basim, son of the Prophet, the most eloquent speaker of the Arab, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أُعْطِيْتُ فَوَاتِحَ كَلِمْ
right. He is being labeled as Sheikh al Shafi'i. Sheikh al Shafi'i, Sheikh al Madal Shafi'i. He had been taught the Madal Shafi'i. His kunya is Abu Zakari, like me, Abu Suhail. But Abu Suhail, I have Suhail. He doesn't have Zakari. Okay? Abu Zakari, the father of Zakari. Abu Bakr doesn't have Bakr. Um Abdullah Aisha, she doesn't have Abdullah. Okay? Abu Zakari doesn't have Zakari. Abu Suhail, I have Abu Suhail. Some people have Abu Ahmed, Abu Ahmed. And as his nickname is Yahya al Muhyiddin. And as with the scholars they say, as Shaykh the two Shaykhs of the Shafi'iyah, they mean and know himself and Abu Qasim al Rafi al Qazmi. These are the two scholars well known to me, the two Shaykhs of the Shafi'iyah. But he is Shaykh al Shafi'iyah, with him, no doubt. He's a muhaddith, faqih, and also in linguistics. So that's why he's an imam. Now, from his books, okay, from his books, we find that the book of Al Majmur, Al Majmur, Sheikh Al Bani says, from the best of the books of fiqh, fiqh al Muqam, which is the one that compared between the fiqh, Madhab Hanbali. He was Shafi'i in terms of studying the Shafi'i, but he does not. Everything which is Shafi'i, no? Rahimahullah. Also, the other side of him, also, Min Hal al Qalibi. Also, Hilif al Abraham. Also, Tiriyan al Adab, Hamad al Quran. He had many number of books. In Hadith, in Lugha, in language, in Tafsir, in Fiqh. Okay? He made all of these books. And one of the best books as well, Al Minhaj. Sharh Muslim. Sharh. So that was as well, Nahal for Sharh Muslim. That is one of the great books. Our Sheikh Mashur, and the one who's coming through the explanation. Half of it says. Sheikh al Nawi did not get married. He was asked, why didn't he get married? He said, well, I forgot. <laughs> Too busy. Scholars, she's better than the problem. Then they marry. Now, marriage is not compulsory. Only compulsory if the person is about to commit haram, fornication. If the person is able to hold himself and can you know, strict himself, alhamdulillah, find himself no fitna. I'm not encouraging him not to get married. I'm just saying it's not compulsory. And we find that the people who are who were not married. They produced more than the one woman. Could they get married? They have children. They have children in their head. They have no time. So that's why you can't be a man of children, a man of family, and say man of knowledge. That's why you find Nabi Tali how many books he produced, and the Bible how many books he produced. And also now we in what in his his, uh, his journey. It's only 35 years. Because when he was 10, he was half of Quran. But after that, he started praying. Of all the books of fiqh, that half of every prayer. He used to have 12 classes in the day. 12 classes in the day. Classes. He used to, his gain of knowledge, it was actually at the same time he was giving out knowledge. He was gaining the knowledge, and at the same time he was writing, making books. Imagine how many books he made. The city is so much more, 22 moments. By itself. He was a person who was ascetic, scrupulent. Do you have any battery? Yeah, I need to do so. Sorry. I'm running out of battery. Any extension, please? Do you have an extension? Uh, this is small ones, not like the one before, remember? Do you have any extension you're finding here? No? No extension? I'll go back. We have one. Yeah, let's check. Because we're going to lose the battery. Let's put the picture. Let's put the picture. Let's put the picture. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to test.
when they do something wrong, when they do tyranny. And he would remind them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he used to, you know, stand courageously in front of the leader of the king, Sultan, and he would tell them it's correct, correct. And he will tell them, fear Allah. And the Prophet said, the best of jihad came to happen in the Sultan. The best of jihad is to say the word of haq in the presence of a tower leader, not behind his back, in his presence. His uh, story is well known with the uh, king Wahab, King Wahab uh, He was a sultan, king Wahab. He was uh, before a slave and they became the kings. And he's the one who had led the army against the Tatars. The Tatars, the Tatars, the Tatars, the Tatars. They, and he defeated them. So there's a story between him and the Imam al Rahimahullah. First story is that the Bahir papers, he was in Egypt. After he had won the war against the, the Terrians, he had asked for all the land, which is in Bilad al-Sham, this is what you remember now, remember now, remember, it's in Bilad al-Sham, see, asked for all these lands, okay, that those people who are, you know, digging it, or you know, making gardens of it, and living in it, to produce a proof of ownership. But these people, they found this land, and it was dead. And the Prophet of Allah said, that, He who had revived a land which is dead, it's for him. So you come to a desert, and you make an orchard, and you bring water to it, it becomes yours. It's a desert. In the middle of nowhere. So this, now, Allah he wanted to make these people to produce, otherwise they would confiscate them. So he came to Imam and now we, they complain, and Imam Allah, he had sent to the king, the, you know, the Prophet he said and all of that, so he was so annoyed. So he commanded for his son to be cut off, and for he to be set down from his position. He said, he's got no salary, he's got no position. He thought that he's working for the state, with a salary, he's working like a, a minister or something, or a man, by the way, he does not work. No, he's got a salary. So, he started thinking about nothing. So, what he did, straight away, he went all the way from Egypt, the king, to Bilal Shem. And he talked to him harshly. Almost he actually wanted to beat him. And, you know, command for him to be punished. But Allah Azza kept him away from him. And he defended, and he protected the sheikh. And so, subhanAllah, the sultan couldn't implement what he wanted to implement, that is to confiscate the land of those people. And that's the point of Imam al Another story as well, which is between him as well and Imam al -Nawi. So if you want to go to read and read in the history, inshallah, it's a good story as well, where the Imam al Nawi stays firm. When he kicked him out, he expelled him, he just went, and then he called for him, he expelled him, he said, he said, he said, he said, no one will listen to you, so he said, bring it back, and I'll go back to you all. And he called upon Allah to see him, he died. So, you could read that story as well in the history. Uh, fine. Now, by this, alhamdulillah, we came to the end of the introduction of the book, which is Al Arba'in and Nawawiya. We will start in the in two weeks' time. Please bring a booklet like this. So you could write everything. If you don't write your notes, you're not going to be lost. This is not going to be. And if you're going to say, oh, I'm recording to go back, you don't have time for recording. You don't have time. That's the end of class. Just write. Write anything that you can for the benefits. If something's missing, you could go to the recording. But from the beginning to go to the recording, we don't have time to you know, listen and then to read this. But anyway, we'll start, we'll finish, we ha I have to be from here, 30 maximum, so I have to be in my car by 30. Okay? Any questions, please? Go ahead,